Hey, this is Richard from Blender Grid, and in this video, we're going to show you how you can render a lot more efficient using a very uh, nice trick. Um, so, Mike is one of our users, and he happens to run a YouTube channel uh, with a lot of Blender tutorials. So, he was kind enough to uh, do a tutorial for us for Blender Grid about rendering more efficiently. And what he's going to do pretty much is using a, um, a a video with a static background and a moving foreground element and instead of rendering this in one go as one animation uh, you can optimize the the render time a lot by uh, rendering only the foreground element as an animation the moving element and the background element as a still image uh, so that's what we're going to cover here. Um, so without further ado, I will let Mike take it from here. Here's a cinematography trick. It's okay to have the camera just sit still and let the audience focus on whatever part of the screen is moving. And it also means that this part of the screen only has to be rendered once. <laughs> So what's going off here then? Well, this is basically the trippy hallway by Wig42 available on BlendSwap, plus this character here who is freely available from renderpeople.com. And we've split it into collections. So we have actor, which is everything that moves basically. If we had him knock over a table or whatever, that would have to be in the actor collection as well. We have background, which is everything that appears behind the moving parts. We have foreground everything stationary that appears in front of them we have shadow catcher i'll go into details of what a shadow catcher is later if you're not familiar with them and we have cameras which i'd guess they snore so they get a collection all to themselves so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on foreground and background rendering it 1080p so that'll be that and we want to let's go for 256 samples it's medium high quality uh, we want to make sure that transparent under film is turned off so we, we don't want it to render transparent what we're rendering now is the background plate and we're going to go to comping in in the compositor you'll notice that all we're using is the denoise node we will be adding some glare later, but for now, on this render, rendering the background plate, all we want is the denoise node. And we can either press F12, or we can make sure that we've got external data automatically packed into blend file ticked. We can go to Blender Grid, Projects. This is our file, and we can just drop her in. And we're going to save that as an EXR file. Why an EXR? EXRs are HDRI images, which means they distinguish between the white of a white wall and the white of staring at the sun. We're using it here because if we're using filmic color management, and we probably are as it's on by default now, if we comp in a Pung or a JPEG or a normal image format, the whites actually come out light gray because the, uh, filmic, color, because the filmic color management actually happens after the compositing. Also, if we want to add a glare node when we comp everything together, it really helps if those whites are brighter than white as seen on the screen. Now I'm going to render out the foreground, so I'm going to turn the background layer off. I just want the foreground layer on here, or collection I should be saying. And I'm going to go to film, I'm going to turn on transparent, and I'm going to turn the sampling down to 16, because all we want from this is a mask. All we want is the alpha layer. And so uh, we don't want to go quite down to one, because then we won't get any anti-aliasing. But we don't need it any, high, any higher than 16 here. And if I just press F12, this will basically take seconds to render. Also, you may notice that it's coming out rather too white. It's not a problem because we'll actually be using the background layer again. And all we, like I was saying, all we want from this is the alpha layer. Let's save it as a foreground.png. 
but it does mean when we come to render the actor that we're going to want a new world for him because we don't want him to be as glowing white as this is. Okay, so we've got render settings to set to 256, quite high. We've got the resolution set to 512 by 256, quite small. Now, if we look at this from above view, we see the camera's pointing due east or directly to the right. If we look at item, we see it's 90 minus zero minus 90. It's all 90s and zeros, so you know on rotation, so you know that it's pointing directly in a direction rather than being at a weird skew if angle. And the camera is approximately where the actor is. And of course, the camera is set to panoramic equi rectangular minus 90. Well, this is all default values, basically. And we're going to save this image to lightmap.exr. And now we come to actually rendering the character. And for this, I'm actually going to start by creating a new Blender file. Let's delete all the stuff in it. And I want to use Cycles. I'll have a, I think 64 will do for us now. And the world, the world settings, we're going to load up that uh, light map we just created. There we go. And next, we're going to append in, from the original scene, we're going to append in the collections. We're going to append in the actor, the camera. I'm using holding down control to select these and the shadow catcher. And let's press zero and look at it through camera view. This one we want to set to transparent. Why have I used a different scene for this? Well, the thing is, this is actually the bulk of the rendering, even though it's rendering a lot faster because it is literally just this guy and the shadow catcher. This is going to be the bulk of the render time. And so if I am sending it to a render farm, it makes sense to make a really small scene so that when I send it, it doesn't take that long to upload. It's not like it can easily end up with loads of assets and textures and what have you in a scene and it takes ages for it to upload. Whereas this is actually quite small. One interesting thing, you notice that the shadow catcher is in fact materialed and textured. The reason for that is, well, let's show you. If I were to make it a bright green, like he's stood on a green screen, then when we render it, I'm sure you can see that we actually have this green glow around the back of him. I mean, even though the shadow catcher is basically invisible apart from the shadow and the color of it doesn't affect the color of the shadow, the color of it does affect the light that bounces off it. That's why I try to make every shadow catcher a, uh, like a simple approximation of the material that it represents. Now we're going to go into the compositor. So to use nodes, obviously, and I'm going to use shift, right click, drag to split that. And let's have an output viewer so we can see what we're doing and click backdrop. So let's render one frame so we can see what's going on. So there he is. Now let's add an image. Let's add the background and at search alpha over. So now he's on top of the background, but he's in front of this, which is wrong. So now we're going to add another. I'm just going to add another image. This time the foreground. X and let's alpha over again, duplicate that and accept that that doesn't look right at all. I'm going to use Alt V to, no, V, V, V to zoom out there. What we want to do, we want to do a set alpha. I want to take the alpha from this and V, let's drag that over there, that there, and take this image. And that is what I'm going to alpha over. 
for that well at the moment he's a ghost and for some reason we need to tick this convert premol and suddenly we're able to see him again well we need to do that noise reduction thing as well so let's whoops let's go into into that one and we need to turn on normal and diffuse color and add a denoise node to denoise de 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 arm our guy here so what else do we need to do that could be like significantly smaller here in fact let's just do that because we're only really working in here from now on well i'm personally rather fond of adding a bit of a glare to the final thing so i'll add search glare um, not streaks let's just go with a nice simple fog glow but let's ramp the size up to nine it's subtle and it's not actually turned on yet because it's waiting for it to composite it together but there it is and finally let's go back to uh, this view and i realized that i also want to have um i want some motion blur where are you let's just turn on motion blur and there we go we're now ready to uh, we can go to external data automatically pack into blend file and it's still quite small because we've basically got the texture for him the textures for him and the one texture on the shadow catcher but it's not a huge file with any number of textures and so we can save it we can upload it to the render farm or it won't take long and it won't take long to render because it's like essentially just rendering that one guy 